So in the last movie, we were able to create the footer in terms of its gray background and thicker border up here towards the top. We even added some links in the different categories for those links. Here's the problem. The links are appearing in a vertical fashion, and we want them to appear in a horizontal fashion in terms of how these unordered lists are displayed. We also have a spacing issue. So these are all the things that we need to deal with, and we also need to style the text to appear in a certain way. Let's first deal with the spacing issue. The spacing issue is actually a product of putting the footer div element inside the wrong div element. If we come over to our HTML document and we take a look at the code, you can see that our footer is contained within this content div element, which is inside of the page div. The reality is it should actually be inside of container, but not content. So what we want to do is select the div that holds all of the footer information. Go ahead and select all of that. And what I want you to do is cut it. By cutting it, you'll store it on the clipboard, but you'll remove it from that section. The keyboard shortcut here on the window side is Control X. It would be Command X on the Macintosh. Then what you can do is select the div content container, so this one right here, and collapse that so it's out of the way. And then you want to paste the footer inside of this container div. So go ahead and paste that. Save the HTML document. Come back to the browser and refresh or reload it. And you'll notice it's now in place. It spans across the entire width of the page container. So that was a product of placing the footer in the wrong location. That will happen. Usually it's easy to spot. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to solve. So you just need to make sure that you're placing your content in the correct location. The next thing that we want to deal with is the fact that these unordered list elements are not appearing horizontally. And like I said, all we have to do is float these UL elements to the left. So let's come back to our editors. We want to come into style.css. We want to write a rule for the UL element. So we're first going to target the footer ID, then UL. And what we want to do here is set some margin values first. So go ahead and type in margin. I'm going to go with 0, 50 pixels, 0, and 0. That will add a little bit of spacing. Then we can add the float property. And like I said, we want to float this to the left. Now the only other thing that we need to do is we need to zero out the margins for the list items. So I'm going to go ahead and reference the footer ID, UL, LI. Then we just want to add a margin property, and we want to set that margin property to zero. If you go ahead and save styles.css and return back to the browser, when you return back to the browser, you can refresh or reload it. And you'll notice now we're beginning to see the footer more in the light in which we want it to appear. So we're getting closer. The next thing that we have to deal with is the actual appearance of the H6 element, and also all of these list items and paragraphs. So we want to control some spacing, some text, and also some colors. So let's come back to our CSS document. Inside the CSS document, we're going to write some fairly specific selectors. I'm going to go ahead and type in footer, UL, LI, H6. So targeting that H6 element. We want to start off by setting the font property. So go ahead and type in font. We want this to appear normal. Then we want to set the size to 24 pixels and the line height to 29 pixels. After doing that, we want to set the font family. We're going to go with Marvel. After Marvel, we'll go with Arial. And then we'll use a machine sans serif font. So there's our font stack. So that controls the appearance of the type. What we want to do is also apply a text shadow. So let's go ahead and do that. For the text shadow, we're going to set this to 0, 1 pixel, 0, pound, FFF. After the text shadow, we want to set a text transform property. So go ahead and type that in. We want to set this to uppercase because all of the text in the PSD file appears in uppercase. Finally, we want to set some margin values. We want to set the margin to 0, 0, 5 pixels, and 0. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to set the color to a hex code of pound 666, which is a dark gray color. 
So that addresses the heading elements. Of course, we also have to address the paragraph elements. So again, we're going to write a fairly specific selector. We have footer, UL, LI, P. And what we want to do in this selector is, again, set the font property. The font property will be set to normal. In fact, you can just copy this code that we have right here. The only thing that we really need to do is change the font size and the line height. And that's going to be 18 pixels and 24 pixels. After doing that, we want to set a color. So go ahead and type in color. The color for this element is going to be a hex code of 656565. Again, another variation of gray. And then we want to set the margin values to zero. Next, what we want to deal with is the actual anchor element. So let's go ahead and write a selector for that. It's going to be this same path. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this declaration and just add that anchor element. After doing that, I'm just going to close the curly brace before I forget. And what we want to do here is set the text decoration to none so we don't have underlines. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to none. And then we also want to set the color. So go ahead and choose the color property. And the color property in this case will be 656565. Of course, you don't want to forget the pound sign there. There we go. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to add the hover pseudo selector to this. So when the end user mouses over the link, we can have the underline appear. So I'm going to go ahead and type in hover. And like I said, we want to set the text decoration property to underline. So I'll go ahead and select this from my code hinting. And then finally, we want to change the color of the text as well. We're going to go with a hex code of 898989. Go ahead and save the document. Once you save the document, come back to the index page and preview this in Chrome or Safari. And when you scroll down, you should see the footer appearing much like the footer appears inside of Photoshop. And if you mouse over this, the underline should appear. And if you want, you can just come back to Photoshop quickly to confirm that your footer is looking exactly the same. So that wraps up the conversion of the layout that was created inside of Photoshop into an HTML document. Of course, we've only been testing our pages inside of a WebKit-based browser like Chrome and Safari. The next step is to start testing this layout in other browsers. We'll start with Firefox, and we'll take a look at it in Opera as well. And then we'll take a look at this inside of Internet Explorer. Now, if you don't have access to some of these browsers, you can either download them, or if they're not available for your platform, specifically Internet Explorer on the Mac, you can use a service like Adobe Browser Lab. And that's something that we'll take a look at over the next couple movies.